there was a lot of information that was shared yesterday. So I want to do a quick recap to try to give uh, a framework for people to keep this in mind. This is how I keep it all straight with so many amazing new innovations coming out here. There are four new CGRP monoclonal antibodies. The first one to come out was Amibig, and you can see it's delivered subcutaneously with that auto-injection pen. And the way that one works is it targets the receptor. You can think of this CGRP mechanism uh, as a lock and a key. So the lock part is the receptor and then the peptide, that's the key. And when those two get connected normally, that's what we're trying to disrupt with these CGRP medicines. So the Amibig goes after and it fills up the receptor, thereby blocking it. So after that one came out, the next two came out in quick succession. Those were Ajovi and Emgality. You can see Ajovi is available both by the injection pen or by a shot, Emgality by the injection pen. And those are different in that they are targeting the peptide. They're going after that lock wrap or the key, wrapping around the key, and that's what keeps that connection from happening. Now, just recently, we have Biepti. Biepti is another one that targets the peptide, but what is unique and different about Biepti is that instead of being administered subcutaneously via a shot or an injection pen, it is administered via an IV, an infusion, that takes about 30 minutes at a doctor's office or at an infusion center. Now certainly they have some challenges right now, but eventually want to be able to ensure the patients have access to this. And one of the things that could be a great potential there is a faster onset. There's a lot of heading specialists and some early data seems to indicate it may kick in as soon as one day later, whereas the, uh, the shots and the pens seem to take a week or two to really start seeing the effects. And as Dr. Timothy Smith said yesterday, there are these different mechanisms of action, whether they're targeting the receptor or the peptide. So to all the people out there, if you have tried one of these and you have found that it has not worked ideally for you, we encourage you to talk to your doctor and explore trying the other type, the one that targets the other way. That way you can see if maybe that would make a difference in your response. So those are all prevention medicines. We have a bunch of new acute medicines coming out. So in the GPAN class, which is similar, it's focusing on that CGRP molecule and pathway. They're, the class here is called GPANs. These are small molecules that are blocking the receptor, and there are two of them, the Ubrelvi and Nertec. Both are taken orally, uh, and it's when you begin feeling an attack coming on, you would take these, like a tryptan that uh, would be taken orally if you're using an oral tryptan. The next class is the Dytons. They operate on a pathway similar to triptans on that serotonin pathway, uh, but the triptans have a cardiovascular risk, which is why it's estimated that maybe up to 30% of people with migraine aren't able to use triptans because of that cardiovascular risk, whereas the Dayton's class doesn't have that same risk. So people can go ahead and give those a try safely and see if that medicine, Rabau, works for them. And then the last one, this is an older class of medicines, the triptans, those have been around about 20 years. There's many different types of triptan, sumatriptan, zolotriptan, you name it. And so this is a new delivery method for one of those long-standing triptans, sumatriptan. This is a nasal spray. The advantages of the nasal is that it kicks in faster than a pill, uh, but it can be easier than finding a location or having a needle with you to do an injection. So this is a new nasal spray. It delivers a smaller amount of medicine, but does it in a very targeted and efficient way to make sure that the effect happens. So that's just a quick framework for the preventive and acute medicines, focusing on those that are currently available. You want to refer back to the talk yesterday, Dr. Smith went into a lot of medicines that are under development and will hopefully be coming out in the coming months and years. So switching over to devices, uh, the way that I think about the devices, there are four devices that are currently available and approved. I refer to the part of the body where they go. So the cephaly device is for the front of the head. The e -Nura device, it's now called Savvy. Previous versions were Spring TMS or STMS, is for the back of the head. Gamma Core is for the vagus nerve that goes along the neck right here. And the Nerivio, goes on the arm and you control it via an app on your phone. So again, cephaly for the forehead, enora for the back of the head, gamma core for the neck, 
and Nerivio for the arm. Now this framework works great now. It's gonna hopefully get a little complicated uh, when the next one gets approved, which is Relivian, which will be another one for the front of the head. And the great thing about the devices is that so far as we can tell, they're very safe and they can be used in combination with medicines without causing any weird interactions. So many people find that they need to effectively manage their migraine disease many different types of treatment. They need to do what they can with the lifestyle modifications. They need medicines, and these devices can be a really valuable add-on as well. The last thing that I'll recap is something new and exciting, and this is the Allay lamp, which is focuses on green light, which has been shown in the lab and in testing to be uh, less disruptive and it's less triggering for individuals that have light sensitivity, light triggering for their migraine attacks. And so by using this green light, it has that calming ability. It cuts out all those other wavelengths and that by having this light on, you can avoid attacks is what we're seeing. So that's something new. Uh, people are just beginning to see how it works in the real world and we're excited about the potential there. So that is a very quick recap of some great and more detailed presentations. And again, if you want more information, please refer back to those videos from yesterday. And thank you to our presenters of those.